What's going on everybody, C4 here. Welcome back to the channel and today we are here for a new Madden 22 franchise rebuild with the Vegas Raiders. After that just insane Monday night season opener, the Raiders beating the Ravens, big time upset in overtime. I was like, well, there's, there's gonna be no other time probably this whole season that I'm gonna wanna play with the Raiders more than now. So I thought they were a perfect team here for a rebuild. As you can see, they're a 79 overall. So not the roster's not as bad as you probably think it is. But from a rebuild standpoint, it's a very interesting roster. A lot of young, exciting players, established veterans, and then expensive old veterans that need to be replaced. And question marks that we're going to have to figure out. So let's meet this roster and then get into this rebuild. Hopefully when all is said and done, at the end of five years, we'll be bringing a Super Bowl title to Las Vegas. So at the quarterback spot, well, we got memes here. Peterman. And if you told me, hey, we got Mariota here, quarterback 69 normal. C4, you had to start a franchise with a QB2 in the NFL right now, and it can't be a rookie. Mariota might be at the top of that list, but from a Madden standpoint, a lot going against him for, for developing and, and leading this team. So it's, we're going to go with Derek Carr, but it's going to be an incredibly short leash for Derek Carr. 81 start, he's 30. I'm going to give him one year. If he looks solid to good this year, we'll give him another year. If he doesn't look great, we'll look at draft or free agent or something like that. I, I really do think in that game that we all watch, hopefully you watched it because I'm going to reference it a little bit here today, that overtime game week one against the Ravens, we saw the epitome of Derek Carr's career couple ridiculous throws. You saw the elite arm talent that he has. You saw the reason and glimpses about that. Hey, there was that one year before his big injury on his leg that he was considered an MVP candidate. And then you also saw bonehead plays that just cannot happen for a quarterback that's been in the NFL for seven years. So we're going to give him one year. You know, we're, you know, you can't help but look at that savings department and see like his massive contract is now on the back end where you can save a lot of money moving on from Derek Carr. He has one season to prove he's that guy, pal. Running back room. They just brought in Kenyon Drake. You know, there's some, it's okay, but ultimately it's going to be the bell cow, Josh Jacobs, 89 star dev. We're just going to keep feeding him. We're going to try to get that superstar dev back. I have no issues or worries about this spot. It's Josh Jacobs gig. Uh, we have Ingold, one of the better young fullbacks in the NFL, 75 star. Hopefully there's some sort of algorithm in this sim for this Raiders playbook that utilizes Ingold. Uh, wide receiver room. We have Henry Ruggs, 78 star. Pretty sure he was a superstar last year. So there's another guy that get a little bit of redemption. Let's try to develop Henry Ruggs into a legitimate wide receiver one. See if he can become the second coming of Tyreek Hill. He has that potential. So that's a goal in this rebuild. Willie Sneed, eh, doesn't do much for me. You have Renfro, 77 star dev. We'll be able to throw him right away in the slot spot. Zay Jones caught that big game winning tidy in OT. Always been a Zay Jones fan guy. I mean, some of these guys too are also a little bit familiar because we did a Raiders main channel franchise not too long ago and a lot of the guys are still on this roster for us. Um, and then we got Brian Edwards here, 71 normal, two years ago, was one of my sleeper wide receivers in the draft. And I think if you're a Raider fan, could be a little frustrated. If you consider you know, what we saw in that overtime game, Brian Edwards' breakout game, he had his breakout game really before Henry Ruggs did. So that, that could be a little frustrating. But I think for this rebuild, we're going to go Brian Edwards and Henry Ruggs on the outside with Renfro in the slot and just see if that can grow and develop as a wide receiver. But ultimately, our wide receiver one is not a wide receiver. It is this man right here, Darren Waller, 93 superstar X Factor. Got the yak him up ability. I mean, one of the best stories in the NFL. Someone hit me up. Hey, C4, I got a, got a DH gate order coming in, baby. What jersey do you want? It can't be an Eagles jersey. Darren Waller might be the one I throw out there. I 100% would crush a Darren Waller jersey. Big fan, and I think I think this season, not enough people are talking about it. I think it's pretty much consensus at this point. If you're ranking the tight ends across the NFL, it's like tier one, you got Kelsey and Kittle, and then there's like a space, and then the second tier starts with Darren Waller. I think Darren Waller this year can, can put himself into that conversation. Now, he's never going to be a complete tight end like a Kelsey or a Kittle, but I, I think it's about time to put some respect on Darren Waller's name and put him up in that S tier category. Offensive line, we got Colton Miller, 2579 with a star dev. Very solid. Definitely a guy that can be a pillar on this offensive line for the full rebuild. Incognito, 89, good for the short term, but we need to find his replacement probably in this upcoming offseason. Center, they got rid of Rodney Hudson. Yeah, I guess he won his release. I think of a, of, a, of a center of Rodney Hudson's talent, you kind of find a way to make it work. You try to repair whatever bridge might have been burnt there. Uh, they got rid of their starting right guard, Jackson. They got rid of right tackle, Trent Brown. I think, obviously, that was stuff that was maybe out of the control of Mike Mayock. They brought in Leatherwood in the first round, which is not necessarily a reach in the first round. He was in the area code of a first-round prospect, and it wasn't as bad as, like, Farrell at four a couple years ago or Damon Arnett out of Ohio State at, you know, last draft. But it's just one of those things where you look at the Raiders and this offseason when they had Trent Brown still... Hudson, they had one of the better O-lines in the NFL. Like, this was a Raiders offseason where, like, 
They just couldn't go backwards on either side of the ball. They couldn't go backwards. They had the salary cap. You have all the draft capital last couple weeks. Can't go backwards. And I feel like the Raiders with Mike Mayock or whoever's fault it was, they went backwards. So I'm going to have to try to fix that and hopefully do a better job than Mike Mayock has done with this squad. Now on the defensive side of the ball, we have the star of the show, the bell of the ball from that overtime victory. Max Crosby, 77 star dev. Got to give him every opportunity to develop into... Uh, I, I don't want to put the the cloud over his head of, can you be the next Khalil Mack for this squad? Because that's that's obviously asking a lot. I just want him to be a really good edge rusher. Uh, and that's that's really important here for the Raiders. They got Ngakwe, 78. Lost his dev trade. Normal dev. A little bit surprising seeing that. Great pass rusher. Probably going to be 26 too. Long-term starter. Especially we can hit dev trade with him. With uh, Max Crosby. If Carl Nassib, first openly gay NFL player, had that huge, huge sack on Lamar Jackson in the playoffs. Uh, and I think it's it's great to have him in the league, a legit football player that, while it's, you know, it's, it's one of those things where it's not, I don't, I'm not going to say anything that's going to, I think it is now, it is it's important to have that representation in the NFL. And, and I know there's people that get like, oh, why is it, why are they always talking about that? Let's just talk about him as a football player. It's not for you. I think, I think it just needs to be said, because you saw everything about that big play. I'm, I'm doing this rebuild because of that overtime game. And they showed the sack that Nassim had, and everyone's just like, can we just talk about him as a football player and not his off the field but his off the field it's it's important to be have that representation because and you just at the end of the day the easiest thing is just understand that it's it's most likely it's not for you if, if him and his story can help even one other person that could be struggling or could be looking for you know a role model or something like that i i understand the importance and uh, hey maybe you can make a help play for us in this rebuild I, i've been a big fan of carl nassim since he was on hard knocks with the cleveland browns he was hilarious he was like teaching guys how to like save their money and stuff like that. It was good. So uh, yeah, hell yeah, Carl Nassib on our squad as well. But you know, best football players will play for us right now, and I, I don't really see a way for Nassib to crack the starting lineup. But he's still here. He's solid. Uh, D tackle. We have McCoy, the veteran Hankins. What I did in storyline. Let's give Cleveland Farrell another opportunity to restart his career. I had him move to D tackle where he was 77, and then to make it a little realistic. He was a 265, so we just told him to go somewhere on the Vegas Strip. Get a couple heart attack burgers. Gain 10 pounds. Still undersized, but a little bit more of like, all right, a believable undersized, like Grady Jarrett size, something like that. So let's see if he can reinvent his career. Other than that, I mean, you get another bust that's trying to redeem himself here in Solomon Thomas. But ultimately, uh, this is a, you know, as a whole, the defensive tackle spot. Gotta have to figure this out. Linebacker and core. We have the veteran in KJ Wright, 82 star. But again, you know, how long is he? We got a year, pretty much a year at him. Kwiatkowski, Perryman, Morrow, middle linebacker. Kwiatkowski, does he have a dev? 82 normal. Ugh. That's a lot of money as well. And he got Littleton here. He's very expensive. Hasn't really looked the same. Hasn't got that return investment from the, the player that he had in breakout year with the Rams. Uh, Diablo, great name. No dev. Ah, it's just, just, it's a rough. I mean, you got 91 speed, 92 acceleration line. Probably a converted safety, obviously, from UNLV. It's a linebacker, you know, we have to replace this linebacker room. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Unless, you know, it is also a position with between Kwiatkowski and Littleton. Linebackers that are on normal dev that start, go up dev trade. It is, it's, a, it's just what happens, so maybe that's kind of the way we view it. These guys have to get their dev trades sooner than later, year one, year two. Secondary, we got the veteran in Casey Hayward, Trayvon Mullen, 80 with that star dev. He's going to be a pillar. He's probably going to be a guy that we want to have on the team for all five years of the rebuild. Hayward solid for the time being. They got Arnett, 74. We actually has a dev trait? Okay. I, I can see I can see developing him into some something. Amik Robertson, he got Nate. Okay, I actually didn't know Arnett would have a dev trait. So two guys under 25 in the secondary that have a star dev. We can work with that. That's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Uh, free safety of Morig coming in at a TCU. Really good draft pick. Getting him in the second round was immense value. 73 with a hidden dev. So he should be a staple and a fixture. And then we got the old Abrams tank. John Abrams, 74 star. Man, there's a chance. We don't even have to really touch this secondary. Eventually, we'll have to get Casey Hayward's replacement. But we could probably keep all these pieces in place and hopefully develop them into uh, a really formidable secondary. You have Carlson, who was massive in that overtime game. Really solid kicker. Uh, you have AJ Cole at punter. But ultimately, very interesting roster. I think the biggest thing above all is just what is Derek Carr going to be in this rebuild? We're going to find that out here in year one and then figure out whatever direction we need to go at that quarterback spot in this first offseason. So without further ado, let's get into year one of the Las Vegas Raiders rebuild. So I was actually kind of cruising the trade block here and I saw Mooty. 
The left guard here for the Denver Broncos, 71 with a star dev. I think he's only in his second year, was on the trade block. They needed a quarterback. They needed a strong safety. So I actually think I made a kind of decent trade that if, if you're the Broncos and, you know, you're, you're kind of throwing everything at the wall to see what sticks between Drew Locke, between Teddy Bridgewater to find your quarterback of the future, I think why not throw Mariota's hat in the mix, right? I don't think that's too outrageous. And then we have Gillespie. First, uh, I don't know what round he was, but he's 68 rookie. So I think that's obviously where the more value is that kind of breaks even here a little bit. And hey, you're throwing this guy in the trade block. We desperately need a guard either to take over Richie Incognito after next year, or we could probably actually plug and play Muti with that dev trade as our starting right guard. So I'll easily make this decision. And it kind of made sense just from a quarterback standpoint for the Denver Broncos. Why not take a chance on Mariota? So we're at the midway point of year one and actually a lot better than expected. Five and three second place. And we're technically ahead of the Chiefs. The Chiefs that win the Super Bowl every year. So that's pretty good. We had a breakout scenario against the Giants for Yannick Ngakwe, which was actually very achievable. He had to get one TFL and he'd go up a dev trade, which he did. So that is very nice that we now have a star dev trade on one side in Max Crosby and now a star dev trade on the other side in Yannick Ngakwe. So let's look at a look at our contracts as we continue this little bit of a Cinderella season. Like right now, very much in contention to compete for the AFC wildcard spots. Uh, two veterans, I'm, again... Like, who really deserves a contract out of all these? Like, the old players, I'm not going to be rushing to resign. I do like Carlson as a kicker, though. I think we can have a kicker here for the remainder of the rebuild. Give him a four-year deal under a $2 million cap hit. Easy does it. Fullback, what is the fullback's importance? I don't know in this offense, but this is one of the best. So why not? He wants actually more money. We're going to get bent over by a fullback here. Come on, man. Just need a little bit more money. I'll probably give him a little bit more money. Okay, we got to, like, this is this is late season. We got another dev trade scenario potentially for Ngakwe to go from star to superstar. This is the most insane. Like, we just beat the Browns. We almost beat sweep the Chiefs. We went one and one. We're nine and five. Year one with the Vegas Raiders. Easily the most surprising record I've had so far. We might, we might still choke it and not make the playoffs, but still to be nine and five, it's insane. And we'll take that dev trade for Ngakwe up to a superstar. Let's go. Great return on investment here for the Mike Mayock contract. I don't want to say this like I thought the Raiders were going to suck, but at 11-6, and six, did not think there was a chance in hell we were making the playoffs in year one, and we came second place in the AFC West. Okay. Were we the last team in? I think we're probably the eighth, seventh seed. Five. Okay. The Raiders are surprised. Now, was it Derek Carr? Is Derek Carr going to be our quarterback of the future? You're looking at Ross, the league. Winston, okay. I mean, nothing nothing looks uh, terrifying. Nothing looks too out of place there. Let's see what the Vegas Raiders stats look like. Derek Carr was seventh in yards. Touchdowns, not so much. 4,600 yards, 30 touchdowns, 11 picks. And making the playoffs. That's like exactly the kind of like year we didn't really want out of Derek Carr. Because it wasn't a... You know, outstanding season to be like, maybe we got something here. And it also wasn't bad enough to actively try to replace him. In the I don't know what we'll the Maybe we'll just kind of take it by, like, if a quarterback falls to us in the draft, maybe we'll consider that versus saying going crazy and trying to trade up to get the first pick or top five pick to land a quarterback prospect. I feel like that's probably the sweet spot right now here at the end of year one. Josh Jacobs, great season. 1,500 yards, 19 touchdowns. Yes, sir. We had uh, 100 catches, almost 1,200 yards, seven touchdowns for Waller, over 1,000 yards, seven touchdowns for Ruggs. So that's a breakout year. Nine and five for Renfro, almost seven and four for Brian Edwards, 500 yards for Josh Jacobs with the backfield. So he has pretty much 2,000 yards from scrimmage and 23 touchdowns. This offense is rolling. Gruden got himself a bunch of grinders here that are working. Kwiatkowski, 132 tackles, 123 for KJ Wright. For the sacks, 11 and a half for Ngakwe, a new superstar. Thank you, man. That is huge for him to get two dev traits because edge rushes like that are hard to come by. And we talked about Max Crosby potentially. Look at Farrell finding new life as a defensive tackle. 15 TFLs, nine sacks. Although also really worth noting, not to be like, oh, you cheesed him. He's a scheme fit. We want speed rushers for our scheme at D tackle. So it just made too much sense to move Glenn Farrell in there to the defensive tackle spot. Six for McCoy. Crosby, really the only disappointing guy so far. 14, and even that's not brutal. It's not great, but 58 tackles, 14 TFLs, four and a half sacks is serviceable. Uh, four picks from the veteran Casey Hayward leading the squad. Um, okay, I'm not happy with the fact that we re-signed our kicker and he was not good this season. 
but it is what it is. Yearly awards. MVP went to McCaffrey. No real surprise here. Josh Jacobs coming in at number seven, which is cool. In the AFC, I was playing. They went to Patrick Mahomes. Josh Jacobs at uh, top five, number four. Defense play, they went to DeForest Buckner. Offensive rookie, they went to Trevor Lawrence. You just more so see what we got. We have anything. JOK, defensive player, uh, rookie of the year. Mulray coming in at five. Then we have, for the, at least the individual awards, running back of the year went to Josh Jacobs. Would love for him, just based off his production here, to get off that star and go back to a superstar for year two of this rebuild. That would be pretty cool. And uh, that's it. But I'll take at least some award winners as we somehow, some way have found a way into the playoffs against... Probably the one team you don't want to see early on in the playoffs. That is the juggernaut known as the Cleveland Browns. But we're gonna give them a we're gonna give them we're gonna give them a fight here. We're gonna give them a fight. So happens with a bunch of grinders. And if we can just complete this upset, maybe I'll have even have to come on admit, say maybe there's still some some wonky things going on in the sim. Because I've said so far, as we get the instant touchdown, this sim seems to at least be a little bit more balanced that the better team wins more often than not. And hey man, we're fighting here. We're we're swinging. Heavyweight bout 14 14. We are the first team to settle for a field goal. And then it lets them look like the Browns are going to be settling for a whole lot of field goals. But we go down the field, get the touchdown. Two minute drill. Okay. Tied up 24 apiece. Very competitive matchup here. Second half, everything to play for. Browns get their first touchdown. Looks like a turnover there, unfortunately. But our defense was able to kind of back against the wall. Hold on. Now we're down 10. Eh, it's over there. Yeah, there's the 40 bomb, the expected 40 bomb. We hung in there, though. We we're definitely punching, a, talk about a heavyweight fight. We are punching above our weight class. We're a light heavyweight at best, all right? We're John Jones trying to fight Yannick and um, uh, Francis Ngannou out here, okay? Just give us a couple more years, pack on some more pounds, and we'll come back better than ever. Derek Carr, 55% complete percentage, not great. Three touchdowns, though. Over 100 yards for Josh Jacobs, you just... You can't, you know, you're not going to win games when you give up 41 points. You're not going to win games when the opposing team's quarterback, Baker Mayfield, goes for five touchdowns and almost 80%. Completion percentage, eh, whatever. It's early in the rebuild, better than expected. Let's be, let's come back better than ever in year two. The season recap here at the end of year one, it was a Cowboys-Titans Super Bowl with Jalen Smith winning the MVP and propelling the Dallas Cowboys to win a Super Bowl. Gross. Gross. I'm not even going to finish that sentence. Gross. Let's look at our squad here. Do we have any dev trade increases? I'm expecting one for Josh Jacobs. Anything else would be uh, just additional. And it is. We got the superstar dev here for Josh Jacobs. Nothing else has really changed on the offensive side of the ball except that, which is still a win for the offense. And then on the defensive side of the ball, uh, Kwiatkowski. Nice. Is up to a star. KJ Wright went up superstar. We had uh, Hayward, superstar. Gokway, superstar. Dev trades on dev trades on dev trades on dev trades. Moring was hidden dev. It was a star dev, which I knew already. But okay. Good roll here for year one for the Raiders. Good roll of the dice for wins, for stats, for devs. It's a good start. I will say there are a lot of bad contracts here on the, the Raiders roster. So the purge kind of needs to begin. And we got to we gotta do what's in the best interest. So first off, we have I mean, Corey Littleton, that contract. Got to get, get rid of some of the, the lesser known ones on the uh, offensive side of the ball. Kwiatkowski, we can keep him. He went up dev trade. He's still solid, but I mean, you look at their Perryman, three million bucks for depth. Not gonna see the field a whole lot. Let's get rid of you. Uh, defensively, not too too much. Seven million bucks for Nassib. Just you know, at this point in time, hey, you know, we need that money. That's seven million dollars that we're gonna be able to go back reinvest into the squad. Uh, I got rid of our guard. I got rid of like we had a depth center that was getting paid a lot of money. It was stupid. Um, yeah, I think. I don't know. I don't really think there's much else that needs to be done. I think Derek Carr is the biggest contract that I think at least he's done enough to buy time to be on the roster for another year. So this is one of the big, what it actually happens in real life right now in the NFL that's been talking about it. Devontae Adams returning to play with Derek Carr, his college quarterback. There was no other bids on Adams. If there was, I would have been like, all right, let's let him go to a contender, especially if there was another bid that was a contender. But at this point, he hit the open market. He probably just wants to get paid. He probably wants that last big time payday. We are going to at least offer it to him to bring Devontae Adams to Vegas to pair with Ruggs, to pair with Renfro, to the, obviously, the, the you know, wouldn't make Brian Edwards too, too happy, but that's probably what's best for the squad going forward. Throwing money at a punter. Raiders have always kind of put emphasis, at least back to the Al Davis years on special teams. And then we got Will Hernandez here at guard. There was a couple options at linebacker, but with the massive contract going Devontae Adams' way, don't want to spend all of our salary cap 
in the first window want to be able to maybe push that expand it into the future years so that's you know we don't just you know lack of a better term we don't want to blow our load all on the first free agency window we're going with what we don't need multiple you know 50 60 70 million dollar contracts let's just stick with the 120 to adams bring in a new right guard and draft really well nice able to land gillian will hernandez and Devonte adams welcome to vegas so for our draft board we actually have like the quarterback spot anyways the perfect scenario here we have yates early first round qb in the fourth round the ultimate luck of the draw we i mean I, i'm probably gonna overdraft this guy in the second round if i'm gonna be honest with you i don't know we, i think we're playing with fire for waiting till the third round but the fact that we can very well get our potential successor for car and yes we just did get Devontae adams essentially to pair with their car but i think there's just way too much value here maybe we look at trading back uh in the second round have two second round picks like maybe i'll trade my third my fourth but Yates is going to be a quarterback that we don't have to target in the first round that we absolutely want on our team. I, I think we look here, we got Bernard here, mid first round defensive end. Uh, is a scheme fit? More so thinking we could slide him into D tackle. I, I need a D tackle. And I got a lot of value at D tackle, a lot of second rounders, but no real first rounders. And at, you know, 294, 290, you know, he could be D tackle. Might, yeah, a little undersized pairing with Farrell, but at this time, it might be the best, you know, kind of option. We have Peterson at uh, linebacker he actually is a scheme fit third round could maybe wait till the second round we have two second round cores michael hart early first colbert mid first so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna grab the corner first actually there's a way that we can get this to end <sighs> just because d tackles grow on trees so do corners to a certain extent but we need it we need that Hmm. No, screw it. Let's. We're gonna grab the, grab in the corner. We're just gonna grab the corner, and it's good, man. 76 hidden dev number six in true value, getting that pick 22, 94 speed, 92 acceleration, 77 zone, 75 press. Michael Hart, welcome to Vegas. All right, this spot here, we still have our two top targets that I wanted in the second round, uh, and I think at this point, even though I really want that linebacker, we could try to trade back in to get that linebacker. We just can't miss. This is a perfect scenario for a quarterback. Steven Yates out of UCLA. Yeah, he was going to be a baller. 76, hidden dev, 8 in true value, getting him at pick 54. What do we got here? 90 throw power. All the accuracies look pretty good. Hell of an athlete. 90 speed, 90 acceleration. This might be the, this might be the best quarterback I've drafted in Madden in a very long time. Steven Yates. Here's hoping, man. You know, if he's only a star dev... Maybe we'll have a little bit more leniency with Derek Carr, but if he comes out, you know, superstar or something like that, I think this has to be our guy. Was able to trade back into the second round to get that outside linebacker. Sent my third this year, my fourth this year, my third next year, and that was just enough to get it over the line here to get the second round pick. Pick 55 from the Green Bay Packers to draft that outside linebacker who's probably going to have a normal dev, but he's also going to most likely start for us this year and have a great opportunity at a dev trade scenario. But who knows? Maybe this guy's going to be a stud. I don't know. Cade Peterson, welcome to Vegas. Please have a dev trade. No. 73 normal, number 31 in true value. So he's, you know, within first round type talent, top 32 guys. Uh, looking at the stats here. Looks solid. Good athlete, good pursuit. Solid linebacker. Not great in coverage, but he's a scheme fit and will most likely have the keys to be our starting right outside linebacker. And then we can maybe move Diablo around or something like that. Just gotta acquire more talent that linebacker spot so for our draft recap hit on the hidden dev corner hit on the hidden dev quarterback traded back up to get a very capable starting rookie linebacker and then the rest of the draft was solid got a 69 normal middle linebacker 66 dn and we're able to grab solid defensive tackle depth which you know which i didn't have yet at this point knowing the draft board what we gave up to trade back into the second round, I might have might have had a couple other prospects that could have put us further ahead. If you're trying to grade this draft, but still very happy with the draft, getting two for sure starters, most likely three. And, you know, obviously, didn't didn't just walk ourselves into a QB controversy, but how how much what is a realistic expectation for Derek Carr, right? It's you need another QB on the roster. Because at any given moment, Derek Carr could go past his expiration date. Hopefully, though, we have a little at least year or two. Car, Devontae Adams, they can reunite that and have something fun to go for.
Year two for the Raiders. Here is where our squad is at on the offensive side of the ball. We have mentioned the dev trade increase for Josh Jacobs in the offseason. Uh, I don't know why our guard's not. Mooty's not playing. Let's just do this. There we go. That's a little bit better. Uh, we added Will Hernandez to kind of solidify the offensive line just a little bit. But the big addition is just, uh, well, maybe there's technically two. We have Yates, who might very well be the franchise quarterback of the future. We don't know yet, but we still have one more year to see what Derek Carr can do. And we reunited him with a college teammate, Devontae Adams. The Fresno State connection is back and potentially better than ever. I'm going to be very interested to see how that was. Because last year, you're going to remember, um, Ruggs, 1,000 yards. Darren Waller went over 1,000 yards. Can they maintain that production? Then you just throw Devontae Adams in the mix. Could that take this offense over the top? Defensively, um, you know, Gawkway got that dev trait. We bring in Hart in the first round, kind of solidifying the secondary a little bit. Drafted Peterson, traded actually back into the second round to land him. Diablo at linebacker, a little bit worried about D-tackle depth. He just couldn't get everything done all in one offseason. But generally, I am still very bullish about this Raiders squad here ahead of year two. Because the season wasn't going the way I wanted to at this point, I did want to get a little Derek Carr to Devontae Adams magic. So we got some gameplay here in the most exciting game of the season against the Denver Broncos. And there's a great little connection there. Derek Carr on the throw, on the run, brings it down. Another jump ball from Devontae Adams. Just really the do-it-all wide receiver. And uh, his route running, especially in the red zone, was just too much for the Broncos to handle. But this was a epic game. It went to overtime. Very high scoring, 45-45. Here's the final play in overtime. Derek Carr finds Waller at just, I don't know, 29. That's a cuttable offense. Doesn't even take a single angle on Waller to bring him down. Game-winning touchdown, an epic victory. The midway point of the season, five and six. Not really where we want to be, considering we have one of the best offenses in the NFL, but it's still not over. We're still very much in contention for the division and for wild card spots. Um, an epic overtime victory can... You know, route mid mid season ish could spark the flame that we need to finish out this year's and strong. So let's take a look here at some contracts. Who do we got? Who wants to get some money? First up, we got Josh Jacobs. Absolutely, even though you're not really supposed to pay running backs for the sake of this rebuild and the sake that he was dominant last year. Absolutely, we got Trayvon Mullen at corner. Throw around another five year deal. Get him locked in. We got Angakwe, who hit superstar dev last season. Want him here for the remainder of this rebuild. Get him locked in. Kwiatkowski. Some of these guys are in. Okay, definitely we'll get Renfro. I feel like slot wide receiver. He's only going to get better. He's, he's more than served with slot. I think Max Crosby, also worth of a contract. Let's give him a five-year deal under a $5 million cap hit. So that's very affordable. Same with Pharrell at a D tackle. Uh, yeah, let's just you know, let this happen for the whole year. Colin Farrell. Farrell, Pharrell, whatever. The rapper? Are we part of Nerd. Colin Farrell, 82, get him locked up. Derek Carr, okay, we got Abrams Tank, get him on the back end. Sure, man, we still have like $100 million of salary cap after re-signing everyone I want. Now, the question does come with Derek Carr. Let's see what he can do this season. No need to really rush a contract extension just yet because we have that young buck ready to uh, potentially overtake him depending on how this season finishes out. So let's just kind of take a wait-and-see approach for the rest of these free agents. And since we last talked, we won one game to close out the season finishing six and eleven, which is um, no other way to cut it, man. That's not good enough. Not good enough for the steps that we were only better than what we were last year. So what's the reason why we suck? Harder schedule, maybe. Can we even you know toss it up to that? Looking around the league, Brady Mahomes both with fifty six touchdowns, Nick Chubb twenty six rushing touchdowns, Zeke Elliott twenty seven rush touchdowns, thirty sacks. For Aaron Donald. Okay, well, you know, it's just, a, I guess, a weird year across the board. Look at our team. I mean, if that's what we're getting out of Derek Carr, that's not bad. But you almost wonder, what do we get out of this guy? What's his dev? <sighs> yeah, we got to move on from Derek Carr. I mean, here, here's my here's my line of thinking, right? That's not a bad year at all for Derek Carr. 4,500 yards, 31 touchdowns, 10 picks. But we just signed Devontae Adams. And he put up pretty much the same stat line with or without Devontae Adams from year one and year two. That's not good enough. So it's going to be the Yates going forward, man. 1,500 yards, 16 touchdowns for Josh Jacobs. Outstanding. Got 1,100 yards, seven touchdowns for Waller. 1,008 for Renfro. 1,009 for Adams. Almost eight and seven for Ruggs. Like, that is S tier. We need to be winning more games. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Defensively, Diablo. 149 tackles. 
might be in line for a dev trade increase, which would help. Uh, two interceptions as well. 11 and a half sacks in Gakwe, fine. Seven and a half for Crosby, fine. Definitely not nearly as many sacks as we had a year ago. Abram, four interceptions, leading the team. Happy with that, man. Also, two picks for Morig. Good young secondary, man. They're only going to get better. Quick look at the yearly awards. We're probably not having anything. Zeke Elliott is the MVP. We'll just quickly look and see if there's any Raiders represented as award winners. And not seeing it. It's a down year. It's an off year. It's an earlier year. It's a transitionary year as we say bye. Thank you for your service, Derek Carr, but just not good enough with Devontae Adams for me to throw you any more money. And at the end of year two, weirdly enough, uh, the Jags won the Super Bowl, beating the Dallas Cowboys. Ronnie Harrison is the Super Bowl MVP. I'll take that over the Chiefs winning, even though it's still annoying seeing Dallas there all the time. It's still better than the Chiefs winning, which is way too common here in Madden 22. Looking at our squad here offensively, if we have any dev trade increases or, well, we turned off decreases, so we don't have to worry about that because they're bested. Max Crosby is up to, and Hurts, we drafted two superstars. Let's go. That's our first. Superstar corner, Crosby got up superstar. Diablo went up to a star, which is cool. I can rock and roll with that. But we drafted two superstars last year. Let's go. Over free agency, we had so much. I had $90 million worth of salary cap. So I wasn't going to go completely buck round. Aaron Rodgers, Tyreek Hill. There's some good games out there. Darius Smith would offer a pretty big upgrade. But we are definitely going to reinvest in this squad. The secondary, while we do have a superstar in heart. And Mullen, you know, Jair Alexander's not always there. And I feel like with the salary cap that we have at our disposal i would feel remiss you know it'd be a missed opportunity if we did not at least try and sign jair if we can't poach him away from green bay fine at least we tried uh then i got to run paint a defensive tackle we actually really do need another d tackle there the pair with uh cloud farrell so hopefully we can land him and i got okariki middle linebacker superstar formerly of the colt big time bid coming in these will be three massive additions to the defensive side of the ball hopefully we can get all three and hey who doesn't want to go play in Vegas? Deron Payne, Bobby Okariki, and Jair Alexander. Welcome to Vegas. This is a tough one. There's two obvious selections, I think. I'm really pondering here. One is I need an outside linebacker that is a power rusher. He's a speed rusher, but he has good power move. So he most likely can fill out the left outside linebacker spot. And I need an interior lineman, a guy that we can shift in the center. And this guy here, it's very tough to get. <sighs> like, will he still be there in the second round? He's early second. We do pick early second. We have a top pick. It's like, if he can get to the second, I could trade up. But I don't even that much ammunition. We got to... I got to go with the lineman. The lineman's more impactful for what we need this year. Oh, and he got the dev. I'll take that, man. Absolute reach, but it's what we need. We've been spending and getting our big-time players in free agency. So when we draft 74, hidden dev at number 7, eh, is what it is. Take it. We need it. You know what? Well, not a perfect scheme fit, our left outside linebacker is a power rusher, and we have a power rusher defensive end. So it's kind of a decent consolation prize, late first-round talent, Alvarado from Tennessee. 74, normal dev. Just add some more competition there. And hey, look. With that athleticism, absolutely he can stand up and be an edge rusher for us, even though it's kind of a hybrid position. So here's how our draft finishes, knowing in hindsight that we had two superstars in our first draft. Just, the optics aren't as overpowered, but we do got a hidden dev lineman that's going to be a day one starter for us. So I'm happy with that. Uh, an edge rusher that adds some, you know, some depth to certain positions. We got some O-line depth here as well, but, you know, we did our damage in free agency this year. Year three for the Raiders, and here is how things are shaping up. It is the Yates era. Steven Yates, 79 superstar, taking over for Derek Carr, and hopefully can bring this team to heights that we've never reached. He's pretty much, uh, you know, white Lamar Jackson. 90 speed, 90 acceleration, 89 agility, 91 throw. Uh, just, yeah, come on, man. This guy's going to be insane. Have we seen a mobile quarterback like this? He's like, essentially... He's Johnny, if, like, what if with Johnny Menzel? Johnny Menzel. We have another chance to try to recreate Johnny Menzel. Uh, we took Anderson, the guard, because we already had Will Hernandez. I said I need an interior lineman. We're going to move him into center. So we have a 74 hidden depth center there on the, you know, 
Trying to anchor the O-line there. Hopefully, it's a superstar dev. That'd be pretty cool to go in hand-in-hand -hand with the two superstars we had last year. Looking at our squad, we had Deron Payne in free agency and Jair Alexander, which kind of makes David Arnett here a little bit surplus requirement, but I couldn't find a trade that made sense. I didn't want to do anything too outlandish because the only spots that really... It'd be this left-outside linebacker spot. And even then, let's not get, you know, completely short-sighted here. The dev trade doesn't look great, but it's still a guy in his second year that's a 77 overall with boost. Could still hit the ground running. Still way too early to shut the door that he won't get a dev trade scenario so i definitely want to keep growing and developing him okariki now on that linebacking core hopefully he's going to tie everything together but this is a very scary looking team i did not think it would look quite like this only three years in the rebuild but we are looking like an absolute powerhouse in the afc let's get into year three mid-season and you know a little underwhelming to be last place chiefs are kind of running away here but the fact that three and four it's not a death sentence in week nine and we have a brand new quarterback even though he has a very high ceiling, we think he's going to be awesome. His first year, still pretty much a rookie. We got Peterson, that outside linebacker, the normal dev, getting his dev trait scenario here. Would be pretty good if he can actually earn it against the Packers. Two or four and four. Let's actually sim and see if he earns it. Defense of dev traits are the only ones that actually work right now in game. I'm still batting under 500 for defensive players that actually achieve it. So here we go. Just showing you that you don't always get them. But we have some contracts here. We got uh, another actually potential breakout scenario. We won 35-10. Actually kicked the crap out of them. With Yates, four touchdowns. Okay. You know, she's getting a little camera time right here. Wants to ball out for everybody. Um, we have a tandem breakout on defense. So what do we have here? Who is it? Uh, Jair Alexander. Well, let's, uh, let's praise Trayvon Mullen. So I think this is going to be a scenario. Probably Jair gets a boost. Mullen gets a dev trait scenario. So there you go. Jair gets the XP boost. And if Mullen has a big time game, he will also go up to a superstar dev, which would be pretty dang cool. But let's talk about some contracts here. First and foremost, uh, Darren Waller, yep. Yeah, he's going to be one of the faces of this rebuild. Absolutely, let's keep him in. Need to send him a little bit more money. We have Henry Ruggs, who's been solid, honestly. Hasn't had that breakout year, hasn't really needed to. He's been a thousand yards, around that thousand yards for most of this rebuild. We'll get Muti a new contract with an outstanding trade that we made here in year one. Arnett, kind of surplus. Same with Brian Edwards. Same with all these other young players. Don't really need them at this point, so we will come back to the table with Darren Waller. But anyways, well, let's just bring it here live, because I want to see if we actually hit on this dev trait against the 2-6 and six Dolphins. Should be a win. Should be able to take us one game above 500. And we do it. 34-17. 5-4. A little bit of momentum here. And with this, I've actually yet to see one of these, like, cutscene dev trait scenarios hit. And we uh, did not hit it with Trayvon Mullen. I do like this stuff. I think that's definitely the direction franchise mode needs to go with more of that. As long as it's not game-breaking. That is, you know, that's that's another story. Darren Wall, let's give him a second contract offer here. Let's give him six and a half. 6.9. Five years, 66.8. And there we go. Got him locked up. This is a run. We haven't lost the game. We got two weeks left. We have yet to lose a game since we were just like I should have just kept it there. If we win this one, I mean look at our team, it's stacked. We're gonna win like the last eight. Don't get a buy. But we literally went from three and four. We won ten in a row. I don't know. If, I don't I still think drafting two superstars in one draft is more crazy. Ten wins in a row for the 90 overall Raiders and put them into the playoffs. Let's go. Looking around the league, nothing too crabby. A couple 2,000-yard rushers, uh, 23 sacks for Brian Burns, seven picks, Darius Slayton. Nothing too outrageous around the league. Things are kind of held in check. Really want to see what our QB did. Yates, kind of the benchmark. I mean, technically, that's better than any year that Derek Carr had for us for the first two seasons. 4,500 yards, 32 touchdowns, six interceptions. Not a lot of turnovers for a rookie. That is exactly what you kind of want to look for there. Running the ball, outstanding from Josh Jacobs, 1,600 yards, 19 touchdowns we i mean 1200 yards six tutties for adams eight and seven for renfro eight and five for waller eight and nine for henry ruggs um uh, you know hey i guess it is what it is i would thought maybe better numbers i guess uh diablo is really carving himself out a roller on our defense leading the team in tackles yet again two sacks three interceptions 12 and a half sacks in Gawkway, 12 for Farrell, 10 for Deron Payne, 9 for Crosby. Yes, sign me up for more of that. Five picks for Okariki. Big free agency signing, 100 plus tackles, five interceptions, four 
for Jair. So we just pretty much paid to get nine interceptions on the season. I like seeing that, man. Uh, this is a good rebuild, man. I really think we should win a Super Bowl. That We have done everything right. Uh, McCaffrey got himself the MVP. Josh Jacobs coming in at number nine. In the AFC, just seeing outright any Raider winners. Mm, no, but whatever, man. We know we're the better team. That's This is stacked. It's only year three, so let's see if we can go on a run here. It all starts in the wild card round against the 10-7 and 7 Steelers. This team is so good. I think we have enough. I think, I think we have, like, the perfect formula. I think the one thing we might be missing is, like, a superstar edge rusher. Those tend to be fairly important, and we might be able to get one of those. Still got plenty of time left, still have plenty of salary cap left, depending on who hits the open market. But here, very even first half, Pittsburgh gets the go-ahead late in the first half. They start the second half out with a touchdown. We get an instant touchdown, just trading touchdowns back and forth. First team that settles for a field goal is probably going to lose here. Mm, it's not looking good. Ah... Uh, Again, our team should. We won 10 in a row. How fitting that we lose. We lose to that guy. What? Again, just put it in the scope of our team. Shouldn't be losing these games, but you have a rookie quarterback. This is his one pass. Year four and year five, we better be kicking the shit out of all these teams in the playoffs. That's it. That's interesting. We'll just say that. And of all the ways I could lose to who I could lose, that's certainly one of the trillion ways that could happen. Mariota? What? So the recap, kind of more in line with what I've seen. The Chiefs win the Super Bowl 42-28 over the Packers with Patrick Mahomes bringing home the Super Bowl MVP before we get into the offseason. Let's take a look at our roster, see if we have any dev trait increases or anything that make us a little bit happy, a little bit consolation. And Got another superstar here. Josh Jacobs is now an X Factor with max security. I feel like he probably should have Wrecking Ball on this style of running. He's a 99 overall, joining that 99 club. Uh, Yates up to an 87. Uh, Anderson, the hidden dev lineman that we drafted, is star. But hey, we got an 80 star center. This is like, come on, man. This is like a can't miss team. There's no way this team will not win a Super Bowl. Uh, Diablo up to a superstar. Come on. Come on. We deserve it. We've earned it already, and we still got two years left to go. In free agency, literally no one that even remotely sounds interesting or worth spending our money to spend this year and not have just carry over to next year in case there's a year five Super Bowl or bust scenario. So we're just going to sit on the sidelines here for this free agency period. Honestly, at this point, for this draft, it's it's best player available. Um, and, you know, technically, I guess there's not a S-tier running back two behind Josh Jacobs. Can we have even more rushing production? So I'm just going to draft top running back available. Roman Hill, 80. Hidden Dev, number two in true value. Just, you know, he's going to offer something more than if we just draft like another safety or, or a corner that's not going to see the field. At least, you know, RB2s will get some touches and he's one of the best players in the draft. Got another stud here in the second round. Peter Howard out of Washington, 75. Hidden Dev, outside linebacker. Hey. Could be a starter for us as a rookie, even though he's not necessarily a perfect scheme fit, has the dev trait. There was one last player I did want to draft. It was a lineman, because you can never have too many good linemen. So I'm sending our third, fourth, and fifth round picks to the Lions to get the first pick in the third round to draft just a lineman that I feel pretty good about having a potential dev trait. It's the center. Let's see where he's at here. Right there, Jace Ramsey. Late first. Ooh, there's still actually another first rounder in Jerome Allen. Don't really need a free safety right now. Could always use a lineman here. 6'4", 295, and he does have that hidden dev trait. 73, let's go. So it was like this loading screen that we have, it's all bugged, but you have like the John Gruden sitting at his office. Is this why, like another reason why the like, franchise is struggling? Because this is not like in the game. So like they just have trying to run all the new stuff for Madden 22 over the stuff that's also still running in the background of Madden 21. Don't have that happen. Year four for the Raiders. No more excuses. This needs to be a dominant season. And looking at it, we only added the number two player in the draft. Skill position, running back, Hill to fill in behind Josh Jacobs for whatever scraps in when he needs a breather. We have another hidden dev offensive lineman. Other than that, we remain the offense intact. Defensively drafted a hidden dev linebacker, which could have an opportunity to earn that left outside linebacker spot. I mean, just 
This team needs to like walk, absolutely walk, not even worry about sweating to the AFC Championship game at minimum. Halfway point, you're number four, five and three. Not too bad of a spot to be second in the division. Chiefs have yet to lose a game, which which sucks, but that's also kind of what happens when you're in the division with the Kansas City Chiefs. This is our final negotiation period. Guys, we want here for the fifth and final year. And there's a couple obvious selections here. First, we got Morig for sure. Very affordable contract. Safeties always are that. I think Leatherwood at right tackle has done more than a serviceable job. Obviously, there's no dev trade increases for Lyman, which is very annoying, but he's solid. There's probably not much better we could do. Same with the Abel. Guy's been a very much surprise and a welcome surprise at linebacker. Get him locked up, and if you pay attention to the salary cap, got a lot of money in case we don't win in the Super Bowl this year to spend in the offseason to make our team even more overpowered. We're already a 90 overall. All right, we kind of rectified everything. 12 and 4. Chiefs are <laughs> looking for an undefeated season. Let's see if we can play spoiler here. Week 18. Come on. Up the rivalry. We do! Yes! We prevent the Chiefs. Oh, we, well, obviously they're going to get the bye, though. 16 and 1. We've read them from the perfect season. It's very close. 38 31. Happy with that as we now enter the playoffs against a 9 and 8 Patriots squad. We're a 92 overall. We are. We just saw the Chiefs. They're an 88. So we're going to assume that they're the second highest rated team. We're a 92. So we're head and shoulders the strongest team in the NFL. We can't be losing to the. To the barely 500 Patriots. Uh, Mahomes had a pretty big year. Not the craziest years. Nick Chubb, 24 tutties, 26 for Zeke. Um, nothing else too, too crazy, to be honest with you. Looking at our stats, Yates absolutely didn't take his game to the next level. Sophomore slump for at least being a starter. 4,500 yards, 28 touchdowns, 15 picks is not really good. It's must have been the run game that went off. Oh, my God. 1,700 yards. 25 touchdowns for Josh Jacobs. We got 13 touchdowns for Roman Hill, the rookie. Well, happy with it. 12 and 10 for Waller. 12 and 8 for Devontae Adams. 7 and 5 Renfro. 6 and 4 for Henry Ruggs. So just if we can figure out to get a little bit more out of that passing offense, this might be an historic overall offense. Diablo led the team in tackles again. Ngakwe with 12 sacks. 10 and a half Max Crosby. 10 for Farrell. And the interception front. 4 for Jair Alexander. 3 for Michael Hart. And overall, very stout defense, man. I don't think there's a lot wrong with this team. Could so, so like you know a little bit of regression from the passing offense. This is a this is an insane team. Josh Jacobs coming in number eight for the MVP race. Look at the rest of the awards. Roman Hill is the offensive rookie of the year. Cool with his 14 touchdowns. That'll do it. And then for the rest of the awards, not seeing any other Raiders, but it is what it is. Stay sleeping on us. We just need to focus on handling business here against the nine and eight New England Patriots. I feel like this was like whatever team we did last rebuild we made the we were like one and done every year we made the playoffs every year and we we're one and done every year this is the falcons wasn't it no it wasn't might have been the second last rebuild we did either way tuck rule revenge game come on this shouldn't be close we should win this one by at least 14 two scores and we're here trading field goals in the snow here we're a team that runs the ball this should be like all over us. We have two very good running backs and we're not doing anything here. Hmm. Okay. Um. Back to the fucking drawing board, man. Ah, oh, get the sim right, man. Just get the sim fucking right for once. I can't wait for this. And when this scouting update, whenever it drops, I'm I'm dropping my my final review on this game, and I'm gonna scorch the earth, man. I'm this is ah. They better hope that scouting update and the patch and stuff fixes a lot, or else it's not gonna be a strong review from old C4 here. Look at the recap for year four. Chiefs win it yet again, another Super Bowl. Boring, you know, it, again, I don't know. I think I asked that at the end of the, the last rebuild that we did that had a lot of Chiefs. It's boring, but like they usually are the best team. So like from a Sim standpoint, even though we're getting absolutely fucked every time we Sim, does seem like the Chiefs winning a lot kind of fits the narrative that the best team wins in the Sim. Our running back is an X Factor. We drafted an X Factor in Roman Hill. Let's go, two X Factor running, like, and we're one and done. We're one and done in the playoffs, man. Like, it's just one of those things. Like, it, 
there's no there's no way that I can in the state of mind that I am right now where I'm like all right I'm an hour into working on this trying to build a perfect team therefore this team should be rewarded with a with the deep playoff run here or there and obviously I'm frustrated that we're not winning games but like if you're doing like some form of quality control and you're like all right let's make let's just see here how our sim works I'm going to just make the best team in Madden which if this was a team swapping all the player overalls and you just took real players and you know made the best player in every position because this is the number one team in the game there's no team that's a higher rating than 92 you go into the sim and you're like i'm with the best team in the game and i'm still losing more often than not in the sim probably need some tweaking you know what again comes down to quality control man and not a lot of that is being done not nearly enough and look at that. at least look here at the top right guard al davis is there we'll try to draft him for free agents, there's only one guy that would be a big upgrade to us, and that is Zach Martin on the offensive line, so we're going to go for it. And there we go. Now we're even that much more the best team in the NFL. Can't wait to be one and done again in the playoffs. Goddamn, Al Davis got drafted. I was going to make that selection real quick. Um, well, I actually have no idea what the board looks like because it's the final. Let's just see if we can get the best player. Early first round, D-tackle Luke Gore. Now they're early in Blackburn. What do we got for the Combines? Uh, let's grab this guy probably the better of the two hey he's, he's okay 76 number eight in true value all right here's what we're gonna do have a little bit of fun just load it into the second season i'm gonna sim it from the beginning i'm gonna talk about what i feel about madden i feel like i gotta get off my chest and it'd just be fitting if we don't even make the playoffs so we are easily the number one team in the nfl we added zach martin 97 superstar to our offense that is just developed nice. We are getting a little bit of regression here to Darren Waller, but he's still, you know, Darren Waller, right? Uh, we draft a superstar quarterback who's actually kind of been a little underwhelming. You have two X-Factor running backs. Devontae Adams still doing his thing. Renfro there in the slot. Defensively, I actually haven't got any X-Factors yet defensively, but it's still, I mean, we brought in Jair Alexander, drafted Hart, the superstar, and Gawkway. Farrell's been nice. Uh, really, everyone on the defense gets a round of applause. Howard is a star dev he was a hidden dev rookie last year but i mean a lot of interesting pieces like if you own and do a raiders franchise yourself you can keep a lot of guys in house and they will develop very nicely if you're watching this video but we're in uh i'm, I'm already getting ready like a nine and eight um, my gut says we're gonna finish nine and eight and be the last team that makes the playoffs as the overwhelming juggernaut in the nfl so let's see so my thoughts on this game, like I, I I didn't, I already spent, like I wasted a whole day trying to record a review for Madden and at the end of it, like everything I just kept repeating, got to wait and see for the patch, got to wait and see for the scouting update. So I was like, ultimately just made a tweet, kind of talked about how I felt about the game in a tweet and said, once that scouting update drops, I'll be able to give you guys, obviously it'd be very late in the process. And if you use my videos to decide whether or not, hey, we made the playoffs, it, whether or not you're going to buy the game, I just got to wait for that scouting update to drop, but a lot of things need to happen. And there hasn't been any information dropped about the scouting update. It makes, makes a lot of people right now be like, are they delaying it? And is delaying it the worst thing? Like, I would rather them release a patch that fixes the amount of sheer amount of just stupid bugs that happened in this game before they release the scouting update. Because it would just be more difficult. They release more stuff into this franchise mode with the scouting update. And there's still all those bugs. Like, you're not telling me that those bugs aren't going to affect the scouting update. So, we made the playoffs. Cool. Second place in the AFC West. Have yet to win. And it went five years. Did not win an AFC West title. Could not build a squad that could take down the Kansas City Chiefs. Look at the stats around the league. Nothing actually too disgusting from the quarterback standpoint. 27 touchdowns for Kamara is pretty damn good. Um, let's look at our stats. Good year out of Yates. 4,400 yards. 36 touchdowns. Three picks. Cool. Best year so far, 15 and 21 for Josh Jacobs, 13 touchdowns for Hill, unstoppable rushing attack, 1,000 yards for Waller, 1,000 yards for Adams, 933 and 13 touchdowns for Renfro, so the connection there is great, 8 and 4 for Ruggs, we have on the defensive side, Diablo Lee just dominating, tackle machine for our squad, sacks are down across the board, interceptions are about the same, 5 picks, Jair Alexander leading the squad, very quick look here at the yearly awards, just seeing if we have any Raiders, McCaffrey is the MVP of the NFL. And then for the rest of these awards, I'm not expecting... Ooh, Stephen Yates, quarterback of the year. Thank you. Needed that out of him, actually. He needed to pull out one of those seasons. He did, at the dying moments, 
And now it's time to help this team on the sticks if we need to try to get past the Buffalo Bills here in the wildcard. First off, and they're not a bad team, 85 overall. Let's actually see what they have on their squad. What have they done? Have they added to Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs, Trey White? I see Ed Oliver's an X-Factor. That's fun. Uh, Matt Milano's an X-Factor. They got Bernardrick McKinney's an X-Factor. Josh Allen's actually not. And they got Kareem Hunt at running back. So that is actually a really tough team to draw as we try to not go another Madden 22 rebuild without a Super Bowl. All right, let's do this, man. On the sticks, we'll play the moments. Things get a little dicey, we will hop in. I'm hoping the pressure the game knows. They're, they're listening through my Xbox. That I'm going to hop in. They're going to be like, all right, we're actually going to make your team play like the best team in the NFL and not get absolutely robbed. But so far, not great. Third down, we will come in. Minute 40. Third and inches. Seems like an easy call here to just run it with Josh Jacobs. And we don't have one run play called. So... That's not what we're looking for. Let's run it right at the middle. He's an X-Factor power back. We need inches. I don't care that I got Ed Oliver. We are going to get this. Thank you. Not that hard, man. He's eating too. Nine catches, nine rushes. Almost six yards of carry. So we get stalled out in the red zone again. Third down, what do we got? They got slants. I'm going to run slants. Let me fix my little monitor here. Get out of preview mode so I can see what's going on. And I remember this QB, 90 speed, so tucking and run is always an option. What do we got? Rugs, Adams at top at X, probably where we want to go. Or we can just take the short throw to Renfro, and there's nothing there. Not what we were looking for. Good pass breakup. Wasn't too much in harm's way. Oh, we get the touchdown from the Sim. Thank you. We'll come back in here on third down, see if we can do enough. I really actually want to get running with this QB. So... If Ruggs, Waller, Adams aren't open, I'm going to try to scramble with Yates. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at the wheels on the kid. The wheels on the kid go up and down the field, apparently. Got the touchdown there. 10 point lead. Oh, instant tutty. Uh, uh, barring an utter collapse here in the fourth quarter, I think we have done enough for the Vegas Raiders to at least get one playoff victory in this rebuild. Who knows if the. If the train and the journey stops after this game, but we did enough here. Yates, three touchdowns, almost 200 yards rushing for Josh Jacobs as the Raiders are moving on. All right, next up, we get the Tennessee Titans. Not as good, but they're still at 83 overall. No slouches. Let's see what their roster looks like. I assume they got Derrick Henry. Uh, Caleb Farley's a superstar. Cool. Jeff Simmons. This guy, Quincy Chan. So... More so, stop Derrick Henry. You're probably going to win this game. And we got our own rushing attack. Good luck stopping that. Two X-Factors. I mean, we got a QB that's a QB that's that's promising. A QB whisperer in John Gruden who has won a Super Bowl before. So I'm expecting greatness here. We get another third down. We're hopping in on this drive. Don't like it. Third and six on the 15. Let's go bench Devontae Adams. There's not a lot of star talent over there. So I think we might just have to trust Devontae here to make a play. Yeah, that's exactly what we do, man. If they're not going to put Caleb Farley on Devontae Adams, going to be a long day if we're hopping in on the sticks. That is the matchup we're going to take advantage of. We missed the extra point because, of course, but we do get another touchdown there, which is good. Happy with it. Tennessee was able to go down the field, score a touchdown. We're able to march right down. Here's a clock running. It's not. So third and ten, another matchup. Devontae Adams, no safety help. Maybe, oh, actually, let's not overthink this. Waller, that is so wide open. That needs to be quicker, but even a late pass to Darren Waller. That has to be, that was, there was like a la input lag there a little bit. I don't know what was going on. Saw Waller the whole way, but we're up 10 into the second half. And this is looking like another close game in the fourth quarter. They're making a game out of it. Third down and three. Let's go to the air. I'm not saying a first down here ends it because there's still a lot of football to play, but I'd feel a lot better about our chances. Still not much help on Devontae Adams. Boom. Before you... Okay, I guess just don't cover him. Just don't. I was thinking already. I was like, I'm going to lock it on Adams. Someone like Renfro is going to be wide open. And I'm going to throw a pick. Oh, they just don't cover him. So that's looking fairly good. And we're able to just win 34 27. Four touchdowns for Yates here. 10 catches, buck 54 for Devontae Adams. And the Raiders are going to the AFC Championship game. And how fitting, man. If we're going to win the Super Bowl, 
probably knew that this was going to happen. We would have to get past the Kansas City Chiefs, Mahomes, Chris Jones. They got Honey Badger. They don't have Tyreek. They still got Kelsey, Dorian O'Daniels, and X Factor. They got Sneed and Andrew Thomas. That's not the Giants tackle. That's a running back. Great. That's exactly what we need. Just more X Factors on that offense. This is going to be a big game. Let's go. Let's go. We can beat them. We beat them to ruin their undefeated season. We can beat them to ruin a Super Bowl winning season. I don't even need to hop in yet. We are cooking right now. Up seven. Efficient. Playing a lot in their territory, to be completely honest with you. Kick this field goal. Go up ten. Of course, you had to just give them a drive. They're doing nothing but scoring touchdowns. But we are got a lead. Okay, we're coming in on this third down. I feel like the game's a little too stretched right now. Let's control the clock a little bit if we can. Third and five midfield. Uh, I like Darren Waller. I'm going to go Darren Waller or we're going to scramble with it. That's a bad miss. That is a very... That's a Derek Carr-esque miss. 58-yard field goal. I'm thinking we just go for the jugular here. Fourth and five. Anytime you get a scrambling quarterback, fourth down becomes that much more appealing. Let's see what we can do. Yeah, there we go. Here we go. Moves the chains. Quarterbacks not having to have that good of a game here. 171 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Let's keep playing the moment. See if they can punch it in for us, which they do. 10-point lead. Kansas City just scores so quickly. I mean, they're Kansas City. It's Patrick Mahomes. It's kind of, let's bring some sound in here. Let's get some crowd audio. Third and five. I like Devontae in the slot. Yeah, we're going to scramble with the QB. Oh, we're running back. Wide open. Josh Jacobs. Run him over. Feeling pretty good. I don't think we can mess this up, but we still might be able to mess this one up. Gotta go for it. Usually I would sim that, but I knew the coach would call slants at the, after the two minute warning. And I'll take my chance with the slants to put this one away. Get it off the sim. We know the sim does not throw any favors. Oh, they get rid of the slants though. I like trying for the sake of the series just to call one of the three plays that the coach brings in there. So here we go. I'm not really liking any of these options here. Might just QB keeper it. That's exactly what we're gonna do with Yates. 90 speed. The what if Johnny Manziel QB gets the touchdown. Of course, they're going to get the insta score. Oh my God. Okay. What is it? Third and one. Josh Jacobs, superstar X Factor. First down. The ch and we're going to the Super Bowl. First down. And we're going to the Super Bowl. First down. Pancake by 73. I love seeing that. I think that's enough to see this one out. Very close. An all timer. One of the best rivalries in football going here in this little save. The Raiders and the Chiefs. And the Raiders this time, despite four touchdowns, a near perfect game for Patrick Holmes. They had no answers for Josh Jacobs. 38-35, the Raiders are going to the Super Bowl. And the Super Bowl has been set. I will say this. When I picked the Carolina Panthers to be my Madden 22 team, I did not expect them to be this good in the sim. They are dominant in the sim. If they have Colin Kaepernick as their quarterback, I'm going to be very upset. Uh, Blue Superstars, we got Brian Burns and McCaffrey as their X-Factors, Bakhtiari, DJ Moore, Derek Brown, Dante Jackson, and then some man known as Chris Allen. I just need to see. Please, they always get Colin Kaepernick. Please. If they have Colin Kaepernick, I might just out of spite turn the difficulty on to rookie and beat them 70-0 to make a point. Have anybody but Colin Kaepernick at quarterback? Hey, it's still Sam Brown. I love seeing that. He's up to an 84 well, it's the massive boost, but hey, I love seeing that for old Sammy. But you got to look at our team overall, too, before we even hop in this game. 95 offense, 93 defense, 94 overall. This is so far the pinnacle, the absolute pinnacle of a rebuild. This is the best team, top to bottom, that I've made. I've, this is the best that I've drafted because I got two superstars and a superstar X Factor. This needs to finish with the Super Bowl. This is the perfect. I'm. I don't know what the term is in baseball. I'm pitch, uh, perfect game. I'm pitching a perfect game here for a rebuild. I need to be rewarded. Okay? If I win a rebuild here, I'm getting like chicken wings for supper. I'm going to be happy with it. Work. Job well done. It's looking pretty good here in the first half. We are up seven. And, of course, they get a little score there. 
tied up. Everything to play for in the second half. Feeling like we're going to have to get on the sticks here next drive. Next third down. Can I get a third down? Come here. All right. Let's get a touchdown. Let's get a touchdown here. Moment of truth. Let's go. I turn on shoe clock because I do not want them to even have a, a... Oh, wow. I do not want them to have even a chance of getting the ball back. Or if they do, there's like 10, you know, less than a minute. And maybe I'll have to play a little bit of defense. But what a run by Yates. That should take it to the two-minute warning. We go. I'm not really worried about their run defense, even though they do have Derek Brown. It's always been right now. You look at the you look at the Panthers roster. Their run defense is like their weakest element, and I have I didn't see a whole lot there on their team sheet that's that really show that they improved that. Let's see what we can do here. Get that first down, scrambling. Oh, it's just see, yeah. it's filthy, man. He's so fast. So one thing I get I don't get right now, like our main series with pink slips. You know, Mac Jones, not a burner. I, w I really do hope at some point we can get a scrambling quarterback. First and goal. Can we scramble again? Is this all we have to do? It's all we have to do! And there's 30 seconds. Make the kick. I'm going to trust the computer. I got all that touchdown. Trust the computer to make the kick. 30 seconds. Let's play defense. I, I'm not, I need a Super Bowl. This is, again, the perfect rebuild. I can, they have all their timeouts. Let's be Max Crosby. A little bit of delay. He runs him over. And that's a drop. Okay, incompletion. Okay, they still haven't used any of their timeouts yet, which is not encouraging. That's fourth down. Fourth and four. Not the best game here from stat from uh, Darnold. Throwing the ball a lot, not a lot of production. You know they want to be using McCaffrey more, but here's what it is. Let's go, Crosby, come on. Game-ending sack. Oh, yes! And we get the stoppage hard on Tommy Tremble. Get the little score there to end it. Yes, sir. That definitely helps with all the bugs and nonsense that's happening here and how we're really feeling about Madden 22 at this point as of September 15th, 2021. A successful rebuild in the books definitely helps. Definitely, uh, I mean, hey. This is like one of those things though, like if you were ever thinking about like, hey, I like rebuilding, let's watch C4's rebuild to get an idea of how I like Madden 22 and if I really want to go out and play Madden 22 and do rebuilds and franchise in Madden 22. You don't want to see me have a team that's the absolute pinnacle S tier team and not win at least one Super Bowl. And there we have it, man. We brought a Super Bowl to Vegas. You know Al's looking down, pretty happy that we got the fastest quarter. You know Al Davis would love that quarterback, 90 speed, right? So there we go as he embraces the Lombardi Trophy. That is a successful rebuild. I think that's our third successful rebuild, which is pretty good. So with that being said, fellas, that's that's all I got for you here today. Let me know in the comment section below what team you want to see me rebuild next. We'll probably get to that for the weekend. So uh, most commented, most thumbed up team in the comments, I will rebuild them next. Uh, comments also help my video in the algorithm. Thumbs up, help my video in the algorithm. So you want to know how can I help your channel C4? I love your videos, they need more views. Likes, thousand likes, shouldn't be too, too difficult, and I appreciate it. And if it is your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Lots of good content on the way, but that'll do it for me here today, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, it's C4, saying peace, out.